Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Racial disparities during the pandemic has been an issue for the past couple of years, and now the state issues its final report about where things stand. Good afternoon, I'm Rod Maloney. A short time ago, we got the results from a state report on racial disparities in health care during the pandemic. Governor Whitmer launched a task force early on to look into the issue, placing Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist at the helm. Our Sean Lay has more on what the Lieutenant Governor said about the report's conclusions. Well, good afternoon. All of us could see it and so many of you could feel it. We're talking about the impact of COVID on families of color right here in Metro Detroit. Here's what's happening today and what you need to know. What you're seeing here this morning is the state of Michigan's work to answer the question why COVID hit African-American families so hard. What is it about the health care and health care system and what changes need to happen to help protect families from COVID? The focus here is on racial disparities, meaning why is there such a difference in COVID's impact on minority families than most any other group? The result of the state's work, the state will now focus on getting far more people health insurance and more health insurance if they don't have enough. Testing and vaccinations in hard hit areas will continue and a big time focus here on mental health awareness and treatment. We'll decrease the number of uninsured and underinsured people in the state of Michigan because just like having a doctor can help you get better health outcomes, having insurance helps a lot with that as well. We'll improve language accessibility in healthcare because Michigan is a big, beautiful, diverse state where there are hundreds of languages spoken. We need to make sure that people have access to it. We'll also make sure that there are no barriers for Michiganders who have disabilities <laughs> to be able to access all the care and services they need without discrimination. And we will increase culturally competent data collection analogous and work to mitigate exposure risks with, along with environmental justice communities around issues such as air quality. Bottom line right now, so many of the Michigan racial disparities, COVID task force works and findings now being implemented around the country to help other communities, not just here in Metro Detroit. We're going to continue to dig into the data of this study and share the key parts that will impact you and your family later today on Local 4. Sean Lay, Local 4. All right, Sean, thank you very much. The UAW is alerting members that automakers are going to now drop factory mask mandates regardless of an employee's vaccination status. The UAW says that GM, Stellantis, and Ford line workers will be able to go mask-free as long as the facility is located in a county with low or medium COVID risk levels as defined by the CDC. The union says that each automaker will communicate to workers when those new changes are going to go into effect. And updating an alarming overnight story in the Ukraine. The fire at Europe's largest nuclear power plant is now out after Russian army forces did shell it overnight. The fire did not involve the reactors and those Russian forces now have control over that facility. This comes as Russia's assault of Ukraine enters its second week with no end in sight. This morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin warned neighboring countries not to escalate tensions. Bree Jackson has more on that. The White House says there were no indications of elevated levels of radiation after Russian forces attacked a nuclear plant in Ukraine. However, the administration did activate its nuclear incident response team as a precaution. A fire at Europe's largest nuclear plant in Ukraine extinguished this morning following an attack by Russian forces. Another sign of the path of destruction left behind. President Biden spoke with the president of Ukraine about the attack after announcing more sanctions on Russian oligarchs. We're going to continue to support Ukrainian people with direct assistance. There are growing calls from both parties for the president to go even further and ban U.S. imports of Russian oil. I don't want U.S. dollars to be funding this this carnage in Ukraine. The administration cautions gas prices will spike even higher and pad Russian President Vladimir Putin's profits. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham suggesting the Russian people get rid of him. You need to take this guy out by any means uh, possible. The Russian ambassador criticizing Graham's comments as a call to terrorism. 
President Volodymyr Zelensky says he wants to speak directly to his Russian counterpart. I think I have to talk with Putin. Putin claiming the military operation is going as planned as Russia captures its first major city. Secretary of State Antony Blinken with NATO allies in Belgium pledging support for Ukraine. We will defend every inch of NATO territory. With attacks ramping up, nearly 4 million Ukrainians are expected to flee their homeland. Negotiators agreed to open humanitarian corridors to evacuate citizens. With a Russian convoy roughly 15 miles outside the Ukrainian capital, there's warning the worst is yet to come. During meetings with NATO leaders and European allies today, Secretary of State Blinken plans to discuss efforts to support refugees from Ukraine. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson. Back to you. All right, Bree. Well, the meeting in Belgium, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg called Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which is not a member of NATO, the worst military aggression in Europe in decades. What we saw last night was a reckless uh, action of war uh, uh, in and around uh, a nuclear power plant, and this just demonstrates the danger of this war, and, uh, and, and it underlines the importance of uh, Putin ending this war, withdrawing all his uh, forces, and, uh, and engaging in genuine uh, efforts to find a political diplomatic uh, solution. Well, the United States has routinely said no American boots will be on the ground in Ukraine, but each member of NATO has contributed by placing some sanctions on Putin in an attempt to isolate the Russian leader and cause financial hardship. The war in Ukraine is hitting the U.S. at the gas pump as gas prices continue to rise. AAA says gas prices in Michigan have jumped eight cents, set eight, eight cents since yesterday. Statewide, the average right now is $3.82 a gallon. Yesterday, it was $3.74 a gallon. Also, yesterday's rise in the national average ties for the eighth largest single day rise ever recorded. And we are following a developing story out of Pakistan this noontime, where at least 56 people have died and 194 have been injured after an explosion at a Shia mosque. The terrorists targeted the building in the middle of Friday prayers. The police chief in the region says that the sources of the blast is suspected to be a suicide bomb, but the investigation is still underway. So far, no group has claimed responsibility for that attack. This has been the deadliest attack in Pakistan since last August. And breaking news from Washington, D.C., where the U.S. Supreme Court has upheld the death penalty for the Boston Marathon bomber. In a 6-3 vote, the court ruled that the First Circuit Court of Appeals improperly vacated the death penalty of Jokar Tsarnaev. This comes two years after that circuit court threw out the death penalty. Tsarnaev was responsible for the bombing at the finish line of the Boston Marathon back in 2013, which killed three people. Well, let's take a look at that weather. And, you know, it's been a very chilly uh, couple of weeks here now. But, boy, are we headed into some really bright sunshine here. Right, Brandon? Yeah, we're getting some really nice spring-like weather coming our way for the weekend. It's a crawl to get there today. We have low and middle 30s, though, and some decent sun filtered by some high clouds. But where we're getting a little wind off of the lakes, Sandusky 29, Harrow, Ontario 31, but low and middle 30s just about everywhere else. And these temps are a good five, eight degrees warmer than they were at noon yesterday. So we're on our way into a nice little warming. There will be a little extra cloud cover coming our way. No harmful leaking clouds. So we're not worried about any wet weather today. Just you know, that milky sunshine, if you will, 40 degrees this afternoon. And we're going to throw another 20 plus on top of that as we head into your Saturday, Sunday, Rod, we'll have it coming up. Well, in that beautiful weather, you're going to have to be careful with your travel plans if you're headed to Oakland County this weekend. There's major construction that you need to know about. Starting tonight, northbound I-75 between I-696 and Square Lake Road is going to close. That's for the entire weekend. Now, to get around that, you can use Woodward as a detour. MDOT expects the freeway is going to reopen in time for the Monday morning commute. Well, still to come, a major challenge to the UAW. Next, Tesla's Elon Musk has a message for the United Auto Workers Union. And what's next after a massive settlement is announced in connection to the nation's opioid crisis?